Okay, yeah, it's been been uh, been some time since I had an opportunity to stand in front of a room full of people, so this is this is fun. Um, I hope I don't uh, forget to say, you know, anything important. I uh, probably will. Um, I'm Tristan. Um, I'm going to talk to you about client side data fetching, uh, which happened to be something I was I was thinking a bit about when this opportunity came up to speak. Uh, SWR is a uh, it's a hooks library for React. Um, for doing asynchronous state management, and it will be kind of the medium for, for this discussion. Um, OK, but uh, there are lots of unfamiliar faces here. You probably don't know who I am, so let me introduce myself. Uh, I call myself a software developer. I'm, I'm pretty enthusiastic about working on front end stuff. Uh, I also call myself an oceanographer, um, and that's uh, uh, my educational background is in oceanography. So I. I uh, I did a math degree as an undergrad and went on to do a PhD in, in physical oceanography. Uh, so I spent most of my 20s um, thinking about waves, currents, and tides. And uh, most of the talks I've given in my life have been in a kind of obscure, an obscure corner of science, usually thinking about sand moving around on a beach. So this is, this is a bit of a new thing for me. Um, but for the last couple of years, I've been uh, focusing more on, on web development. Uh, just for the last couple of weeks, I've been working at Bigger Picture, uh, a supply chain software solutions company out of California. Uh, but for the last two and a half or three years, I've been uh, spending most of my time working at Lunacy Solutions, which is in Lunenburg. Uh, and they're an ocean technology company with a, a pretty strong foothold in the tidal energy industry, uh, but more recently working on a, on a marine data and forecasting platform, which is what I've been spending most of my time on. Uh, and it makes for nice pictures, so I included a couple. Uh, Maybe not projecting that great. But here's a snapshot from the app, lunaocean.app it's called. Uh, this is the eastern seaboard and kind of the surface ocean current expression of the Gulf Stream here. Uh, kind of cool. Anyway, there's lots of really interesting front end challenges uh, associated with this, but that's a conversation for another day. I, I didn't have the bravery to come up here and try to talk about uh, WebGL, which, is, uh, which frightens me a little bit. Uh, so moving on to the topic of the day, which is client-side data fetching. Uh, so some motivation for, for this topic. Uh, fetching data from, from the browser is often necessary, uh, but managing that as server state using low-level building blocks uh, can be hard. And when I say low-level building blocks, in, in particular, I'm uh, mostly talking about React hooks like use effect and use state. Uh, I should say I do most of my work in React, and, and this talk will be a bit React-focused. Um, but it, I think uh, a lot of the concepts are not uh, framework specific, so I hope I hope there's something something here for non-React people. Uh, what is this talk about? Uh, I'll talk about using higher level hooks for data fetching, and when I say higher level hooks, I mean hooks uh, provided by libraries like Use SWR or React Query for for managing uh, asynchronous state. Um, I'll talk about stale while revalidate as a, as a cache and validation and design pattern. Understanding the cache, or, or in this case, there are a couple caches we might be interested in, and managing asynchronous state. Uh, I, I'm not advocating for any particular library or, or package here. I, I, I picked use SWR because I happened to be thinking about it at the time. And uh, it is a nice, um, it, it's pretty comparable with other packages like React Query and has a nice simple API. And, and I think it's a nice medium for this kind of this kind of discussion. Um, I, I'm, I'm certainly no authority on, on any of this stuff. So if you think I'm misrepresenting anything, please don't, don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, so a bit of context, server side or client side. We're making decisions all the time about uh, where we're going to fetch our data. It has implications for how we can, how we can render our pages and, and uh, how we show users uh, the pages they see. Um, ideally, I guess we would just statically generate everything or, or make, our, make our data requests at build time so that you know, everything's statically generated and, and is fast. And, but that's, that's not how everything works. Sometimes data changes quickly or it's user specific and uh, you know, maybe it's a dashboard or, or something that's, that's uh, you know. Sometimes we need to fetch data from the client. So that's what we're focusing on here. Um, I'm, I'm borrowing some terminology from Next.js here more or less, SSG. Um, all these acronyms, um, static site generation, server side rendering, incremental static regeneration, client side rendering. Anyway, these first three uh, involve fetching data on the server in some way. So we're not concerned with those today. We're, we're thinking about 
client-side rendering. And if you want to learn a little bit more about, about these different concepts, I, I strongly recommend Michele Riva's React Summit talk from this year, which was uh, really informative, and he did a really nice, nice job talking about how you might use these different strategies. OK, so we've decided we're going to do some data fetching from the client uh, for whatever reason. Um, got a bit of a to-do list. So here, we'll imagine this is a, a very basic React app. Um, and we're going to use, use basic hooks to do the data fetching. So we're going to initiate some, some, a, state, a state variable. We're going to introduce a use effect in which we'll, we'll uh, call an API endpoint. When that response sets our state data, we will give it to a component and then render some UI. Um, so that's you know, nothing too fancy here. But you know, maybe, maybe we want to introduce some loading state so that we can uh, you know, inform the user when, when data is on the way. So that makes sense. We'll add that in. But then, you know, maybe the stuff in the middle here, we might want to use that somewhere else in our app. So let's, let's pull that out. Let's pull that out and, and make this a hook. So we're going to call, call this use fetch. So we've got, we factored this into a hook. We can, we can use it somewhere else in our app. Except, you know, if, if we're using it to call the same API, we're going to be hitting that same endpoint multiple times. And that seems a bit redundant. So maybe, maybe we should introduce some kind of Simple cache. So, OK, I've introduced a simple cache here. So re repeat uh, hits to the same endpoint are going are to pull from the cache instead. But then, you know, maybe, maybe the data is changing, and it, it might get stale. And, and how do we deal with that? And then there are other performance optimizations we might be interested in. Um, you know, maybe we want to introduce polling, or we want it to refresh on some interval. So th this is getting to be a bit of a headache. There's a lot to manage here. Uh, but we don't have to do any of that, because we can just use SWR. Uh, we, can just, we can just take this hook and just drop it in where we built that use fetch hook, and it'll do all that. It'll tackle our whole to-do list and, um, and more out of the box. Really great. Uh, and the pattern here is pretty similar, um, very similar between use SWR and other libraries like React Query. Uh, we've got a key, uh, which we use to uniquely identify data that gets returned by a fetcher, which we pass to the hook. And uh, the fetcher can be, it, it's up to us to create it, but most basically it looks maybe something like this. Uh, so think, think key value store here, which is exactly what this is. Uh, if, you know, if, you, uh, if, you take, if you use the dev tools to, to probe the SWR cache in the browser, you'll see that it's just, it's just a JavaScript map object that is just associating a key, in this case, the URL to our API endpoint, with data returned from this fetcher. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, so again, instead of you know having having this big complicated fetch hook, we can simplify it down to uh, you know a, a much more straightforward setup. And then if we want to do it, say we want to add some more, we want to fetch data from another endpoint, and we can we can use the sewer hook to. Uh, I'm going to pause for a sec. Um, how many people in the room, by show of hands, read SWR as sewer in their head? <laughs> <laughs> Not very many. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm just going to start saying sewer because I say it in my head like that. Um, so suppose we're adding another another endpoint, then it just becomes another mapped key value pair in our in our data store. So SWR sewer handles that just fine. Um, or say we you know we wrap our our fetcher in we wrap our our hook in another use user hook say and we call. We use that in another component that we use multiple times. So essentially, we're making multiple requests to the same endpoint. And use SWR is just going to handle that and make only one request. And, and it's just deduplicating our request. So that's really nice. This is probably a good time to talk about what, what SWR is. Uh, it stands for stale while revalidate. Uh, and all that means for us is that it, in a cache scenario, um, if, there's, if there's data in the cache, we're going to use it to render some user interface. And in the background, we're going to revalidate and update it when it's ready. Um, and the idea here being that we want to show a complete UI. We want to do it as quickly as possible um, so the user's not waiting. But we want to keep the data fresh as well. So that the trade-off is user will see some stale data for a short time, potentially, uh, until, it, until it's updated in the background. Uh, if, you, if you look up. Stale while revalidate. The first thing you're going to find is the definition of an HTTP cache control directive. 
uh, of the same name that does something very similar. Um, and it's, it's the reason this library is called what it is, but there's some cause for confusion here. Um, so to, to get at that a little bit, here's a, a super simple Express app um, that implements the stale while revalidate cache control directive. Um, so we can imagine that this is, this is our back end of sorts and requests can come to this API endpoint and this is going to return a response that has just the, the date and time on the server. Uh, but attached to that response is going to be this stale while revalidate directive. So this is going to go to the browser, and then it's going to tell the browser, OK, the next request that comes in, we're going to check how old this resource is in the cache. And if it's under the max age variable we've got here, um, we're just going to give it the value from the cache, no questions asked. Um, if it's older than max age, but younger than max age plus this stale while revalidate, which here is five seconds, then it's going to be considered stale, but we're going to show it anyway. Uh, and then we'll do an update in the background. And if it's older than 15 seconds, we're just going to forget about it, and we're just going to get it from the server. <clears throat> so how do these concepts translate to the use SWR hook, and does it, res does it respect them, I guess? Uh, and the answer is no. Use SWR, despite the name, does not know anything at all about HTTP. Um, I wish someone had told me that when I started thinking about it, because uh, the first thing I did when I wanted to understand this was go, go to the use SWR repo and, and look for this cache control directive, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, and the reason is, the only part of this equation that knows anything about uh, the response from our API endpoint is this fetcher, which we are responsible for. The use SWR hook doesn't know anything about it. It just deals with the data that gets returned by this fetcher. So if, if we wanted to try to equate these two things in some way, which is, is not really the right model, but if we wanted to, we could consider that SWR, you know, the front end management library, considers that the, the resource has a max age parameter of zero, as in as soon as it arrives, it's considered stale. Uh, and the stale well revalidate parameter is, is infinite in that as long as it's there, it's going to be offered, but it's always going to be updated in the background. Uh, so here's kind of a simple diagram of what's going on here. We've got an application, we've got a server, uh, and these two layers represent two different caches. So this upper cache here is our HTTP or, or browser cache, and this is the cache that gets used when the server sends this caching directive. Um, so the response from the server in that case will be saved in this layer. Uh, we also have our application cache, and this is where, where use sewer saves its, its information. Um, and so this is, this is an in-memory cache managed by JavaScript. Uh, so as far as, as far as use SWR is concerned, the HTTP cache is the server. If, if, there's some, if, there's valid, if there's valid data in this cache, then it's going, the data is going to come from here. And there, you know, there are a couple different permutations of how this can work, but I think you can kind of see it could either come from the use SWR cache or come from the HTTP cache or have to go all the way to the server. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, I put together a kind of half-baked example app so we can kind of just see how this works. Uh, let's see if I push the most recent changes, hopefully. Seems okay. Okay, so here on the left, we've got the standard use effect, uh, you know, nothing fancy approach, uh, and we're fetching time from, uh, from the server. And on the right, we've got use SWR doing the exact same thing. So if I refresh the page, OK, so they're going to flash red, indicating that those have updated. And the use SWR portion is going to say cache updated. Yes, OK, cool. Um, so every time we refresh the page, um, the use SWR cache is going to be obliterated. We're starting from scratch. So these are, you know, when we refresh, these are doing the exact same thing. Uh, however, if we were to navigate away somewhere else, say, let's open up a new tab, doing something over here, do, 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 do. Um, then we'll navigate back, then use SWR is smart enough to know, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve you data from the cache right away, but then I'm going to update. So we had a quick cache hit and then a cache revalidate back to back. Let's do it one more time. Nice. It's kind of hard to see what's going on there, but Let's add a little bit of latency to that call. So I've just added a two second timeout to that API endpoint. Um, so now, I'm gonna navigate away again. Do, 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 doing something. 
coming back. Okay, there's a cache hit. It's serving us stale data, and then there the cache updated. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, um, and one or a couple more fun things. So let's let's try to add polling. So every now every two seconds, use SWR wants to invalidate the cache and fetch again. So we're getting fresh data now every two seconds. Nice. And one last case. Uh, why not use stale well revalidate in both caches? Uh, okay, so in this case, when we refresh and then refresh again, as far as SWR is concerned, we're getting new data to update the cache, but it's coming from the HTTP cache this time, so there's no change. But the interval is set at 10 seconds, and the stale will revalidate interval is five, so if it's older than 10 seconds, then it's actually going to update. There we go, updated there. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, ooh, which talk is it? There we go. Cool, so I haven't really talked about mutations at all, and I don't really want to get into it because the APIs between use SWR and React Query and other libraries start to diverge a little bit here. Uh, the important thing for the SWR case is that mutations act only on the cache. If you want to actually mutate your backend data, you have to do that outside of SWR. Um, so for example, um, mutate is a function that can be returned from, from the hook in the same way that data and error were earlier. Um, but suppose we want to delete some document uh, from our database. Uh, we would call our, our function that's going to actually send that delete request, and then calling mutate is going to invalidate the cache, do a fetch request to that resource, and then it'll come back without the document, and we can the UI will change. So th there's a bit of a delay there because we're waiting on that request to go to the back end and, and back to the user. Uh, so what we can do instead is what they call an optimistic update. So we can call mutate and update the cache directly uh, and in this case, we have to say, don't revalidate the cache right now, because if we do, then it's going to make the request find that the data's uh, as it was before this, and then just undo our change right away. Uh, so we're going to mutate the cache, add or delete the document, and then invalidate the cache, so that we're, we're just hoping, fingers crossed, that um, the change we made to the cache and the change we made to our back end are going to agree and everything's going to be fine and the user can see uh, the change to the data instantly, which is kind of nice. Uh, that's all I'm going to talk about that for now, though. Um, oh, right, and if we, if we did not call revalidate, if we did not use revalidate false in this initial mutation, then, then uh, as I said, we would um, just undo the work we had done. Okay, so um, lots of people use you know, other tools like React Query or Apollo Client, which kind of, the, the model's very similar. These are, use SWR on the top, um, React Query syntax here, and then Apollo Client here. It, you can see the model's very much the same. They're just key value stores, um, keys uniquely identifying data that comes back. So um, Thinking about it as a state manage, thinking about these as state management libraries is, a, I, I think, the right model and, and a helpful one for getting your head around what these are doing. So to summarize, um, you know, the, the, the SWR API does, does a bunch more than this. There's a bunch of stuff you can explore. It's pretty powerful. Um, it's also pretty simple, which is kind of nice. Uh, I don't think I'm blowing anyone's mind here, but there are a couple stumbling blocks that that I found when I was when I was trying to figure this out. That um, I hope I've I've tried to help with a little bit here. Um, namely, uh, use SW, use SWR the hook doesn't know anything about SWR the HTTP response header. Um, it doesn't know anything about HTTP at all, or about MaxAge, or about uh, stale will revalidate. Um, and it's a state management library. So thinking about it as a state management library rather than a data fetching library, I guess, um, I think helps kind of form the right mental model around what, what these are doing. And SWR is your friend. You know, It's not always the right decision to use it for client-side data fetching, but it usually is. Uh, thanks. I'm, uh, 
it, it's nice to be in a, in a room full of like-minded people. If you, if you would like to connect, I'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, so thanks, yeah.